Hey guys, 20% off the entire merch shop. Link is down below. Use code MAY4. We would be honored if you would join us. Hey everyone, so after the new teaser trailer that we got, I bet the whole world is super confused as to what we saw at the very end. Well, if you haven't seen my breakdown video, go check it out now and then come back to this one. So if you have, then let's move on with this video, which will go way farther in depth on everything about that last scene in the teaser. So at the end of the teaser, we see the Death Star, or rather one giant piece of it that fell into the planet. Now you're probably asking, what planet is this and which Death Star is it? Well, I believe it's Endor, and this was the planet right underneath the second Death Star in Return of the Jedi. When the Death Star blew up, it blew up from the center, where Darth Sidious was thrown into the reactor core and blew the whole place to smithereens. And now we see, almost 30 years or so later, the Death Star is in ruins on Endor, or what I believe is Endor and not Yavin. Now Yavin was the planet near the first Death Star. Assuming it is Endor, and I'll get to why in a minute, Rey was supposed to get the map to Luke Skywalker by diving into the ocean and searching for something. The something is captioned underneath this photo from the concept art of The Force Awakens book. So when the adventure's over, Kira, who later became Rey, finds a hidden map inside the Emperor's Tower of the second Death Star. And the map tells you where the Jedi are and where Luke is hiding. We know obviously since this was intended for The Force Awakens, they found Luke through another method, which BB-8 had the map to Luke Skywalker, given to him by Poe. Now a map to other Jedi, well... Which Jedi could they be looking for? Ahsoka, possibly? Or maybe Ezra? So this leaves me to wonder that perhaps there's another thing hidden in one other spot in the galaxy. That spot, and this is pure fan theory, I'm hoping, is Darth Vader's castle. And Kylo Ren must go there in order to find it. It could be a map, it could be a crystal, it could be parts of Snoke's ring that he got from the catacombs in Vader's castle. It could be something that we don't know about yet in Star Wars. Maybe a way to connect to Sidious' past, or perhaps bring something back. In the concept art for Underwater Emperor Room, Rick said, What if the Emperor's chamber had crash-landed after the second Death Star's explosion? That doesn't make any sense, but that's when Rick knows he has something. He'll say, exactly. And this leads me to my next point. What if Rey, upon reaching the Emperor's throne room, sees things, or perhaps has forced visions of things that we've never seen before in the saga? I mean, they could take Palpatine and de-age him, and bring him back to Jakku, or bring him back to the Phantom Menace, or wherever they want, really. It could be things like she saw when she also touched the Skywalker lightsaber for the first time, taking her through all parts of time with it. It also shows that the idea was to have the Millennium Falcon get there, explaining that. Part of the journey of the story is that they take the Falcon, Go underwater and find the Emperor's Tower. The Falcon is watertight, because it's airtight, so it can go underwater, right? This would mean that they would venture down into the depths of the ocean, and Rey would swim to the Emperor's throne room in search of something. And maybe we'd get, you know, a Qui-Gon bigger fish reference, I don't know. <laughs> Palpatine was definitely up to something before the Phantom Menace, and this was actually stated in the Aftermath novels. He had a massive lab built on Jakku, and it was heavily guarded. Now, in the original Revenge of the Sith script, Palpatine actually says to Anakin how he created him, and he was his father. Did he make Rey like he made Anakin? Did he just keep doing this throughout the years, and even if he were to die, he would have a tendency to bring someone back to life, or resurrect possibly the Chosen One? Maybe this is a vessel for him to transfer to, maybe that's what he was doing with Snoke. He was controlling him, and now that the body is no more, he'll find a new vessel. A much more powerful one. And this falls in line with everything we know about Palpatine with how he always wanted a younger and far more powerful apprentice. And this could also explain his obsession with the Skywalker bloodline. It's pure and it's extremely powerful. And well, if we're going from the original Revenge of the Sith script, which obviously didn't make the final cut of the film, he created Anakin. Now I also think maybe they're looking for Emperor Palpatine himself. Maybe he's cloned himself, maybe he's transferred his essence in the Force to other bodies, and that's how he controlled Snoke. Maybe it's all coming from some supercomputer down in the Death Star. That's a super lame theory, I really hope that's not true, but I'm just spitting it out there. Now Sidious felt a connection to something in the unknown regions of the galaxy. Something that only he could feel and Vader couldn't. What's the reason behind this? I can't wait to go over more theories, but in the meantime, I hope this video answered a lot of your questions on why the Death Star is in the water, which one it is, and where they are. I hope you enjoyed the concept art to prove it. Please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.